Hello. This time we're going to perform what's called a scale analysis on the equations of motion. So as I said before, these are a set of nonlinear partial differential equations that can be solved analytically. But what we would like to do is try and understand which of these terms are the most significant terms uh, and which terms might we be able to ignore in order to be able to have a simplified understanding of the set of equations and how they govern the flow of fluid in the atmosphere. So in order to perform scale analysis, the first thing you have to do is define the scale of interest. Uh, so you can define a scale from global uh, waves uh, to the synoptic scale, which are the high and low pressure systems that are affecting most of the mid-latitudes. Uh, you can move it down to a hurricane scale, to a scale of a tornado or a supercell thunderstorm, or all the way down to microscale turbulence that's happening in the wake of a building or a car or a tree or anything like that. Um, so we're just going to start off with what we call the synoptic scale, uh, which would be the scale of mid-latitude weather systems. Uh, in the synoptic scale, the horizontal wind speed is approximated as 10 meters per second. The vertical velocity is 1 centimeter per second, or 0.01 meters per second. The length scale is 10 to the 6 meters. The depth is the depth of the troposphere, which is uh, about 10 kilometers, or, or 10 to the 4th meters. The horizontal pressure, uh, dp over rho, uh, is uh, 10 to the 3rd. The time scale is defined as the length scale divided by the velocity scale. So the length scale is 10 to the 6th. Uh, the velocity scale is 10, so that makes the time scale 10 to the 5th. Uh, the Coriolis parameter, F, uh, is uh, 10 to the minus 4th. Uh, the radius of the Earth uh, is approximately as 10 to the 7th meters. Uh, the delta P over rho in the vertical is different than it is for the horizontal. It's much bigger. It's 10 to the 5th meters squared per second. And, of course, gravity is 10 meters per second. So now that we have a scale, we can look at the individual terms of the equations of motion uh, to determine how they scale. So this first term in the equation of motion, we move down here, uh, it scales as the velocity vector, or the, the u velocity, uh, divided by the time scale, du over dt. Uh, so in this case, the velocity is 10 meters per second, the time scale is 10 to the fifth seconds, so this term scales as 10 to the minus fourth. The second term, uv tangent phi over radius of the Earth, uh, scales as u squared over the radius of the Earth. We kind of ignore the tangent. Uh, u and v, we treat as equivalent, gives us u squared over re, which would be 10 squared over 10 to the seventh for the radius of the Earth, gives you 10 to the minus fifth. And already you can see that this term over here is an order of magnitude larger than this term here. <clears throat> the third term, uh, scales as uw over the radius of the Earth, uh, which comes out to be 10 to the minus 7, which is yet two orders of magnitude smaller than this term and three orders of magnitude smaller than that term. Uh, for the pressure gradient term, uh, we have delta P over rho, which was 10 to the third, uh, divided by the length scale of 10 to the sixth, uh, gets you a 10 to the minus third, which is a large term in this equation. The Coriolis term, F times U, 10 to the minus fourth times the velocity 10, is 10 to the minus third. Then we have the F times W, which is the other component of the Coriolis force. Uh, 10 to the minus fourth times 0 0.01 gives you 10 to the minus six. So in the scale analysis, to a first order approximation, we'll look at the terms that dominate. In this case, the two largest terms are the pressure gradient term, uh, minus 1 over rho, partial v over partial x, and the Coriolis term, uh, fv. And those two uh, basically are the same order of magnitude. And we have a name which refers to a balance that exists between those two forces. Uh, the, uh, when we have an air parcel that is uh, balanced in the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force, we refer to that as geostrophic balance. Uh, you might refer back to the geostrophic wind, and you'll notice that if you ignore everything else, you're left with the geostrophic wind equation for the uh, I-hat component. If you wanted to do, and the first thing to note is that that is what we call a diagnostic equation. It does not have time in it. So it allows you to understand the behavior of the atmosphere at a given time 
but will provide no information on how that system will evolve over time. So in order to try and get a, and that uh, basically by making a first order approximation, it will explain about 90% of what's going on in the atmosphere. If you want to get to 99.9% .9 of what's going on in the atmosphere, then you need to go to a second order, uh, excuse me, if you want to go to 99% of what's going on in the atmosphere, you need to go to a second order approximation. And moving one order smaller, um, 10 to the minus 6, no, 10 to the minus 7, no, 10 to the minus 5, no, 10 to the minus 4, yes. So then you would add in this term, this acceleration term, du over dt, um, and then you have a three-term equation. du by dt is equal to minus 1 over rho partial p over x plus fv. Uh, and that would be what we call a prognostic equation. Uh, by prognostic, we means that you can integrate that equation forward in time. Uh, and to get the evolution of the system. And you can see that that type of uh, integration would be much simpler than having all of the other residual terms which are orders of magnitude smaller than those. If we wanted to, we could go to a third order approximation and then you would add in uh, this term, the fourth order approximation would add in this term, and the fifth order approximation down here. So you get the idea. What we're trying to do is to simplify the equations uh, into a way that we can get most of the behavior of the atmosphere and simplify the mathematics and the understanding. Likewise, you could do a scale analysis for the uh, horizontal equation of motion in the north-south plane, and you'll end up with the exact same scaling factors uh, all the way across, u over tau, u squared over re, u dot, u uh, w over re, delta p over rho over l, and fu. What you're missing, though, uh, is this other term, which was exceptionally small, 10 to the minus 6. That's missing from the equation of motion in the north-south plane. But otherwise, it scales exactly the same. If we look at the vertical equation of motion, however, there are going to be some key differences. Uh, so we still have the first term, which scales as w over tau which is 0 0.01 divided by 10 to the fifth, so it's been 10 to the minus seventh, which is going to be a very small term. We have this term right here, u squared plus v squared over re. That's essentially 2 times u squared over re. But since we're doing orders of magnitude, we'll just drop the 2, and we get u squared over re, which is they're going to scale the same as in the horizontal equations of motion, 10 to the minus fifth. Uh, then we have uh, partial p rho over d. Uh, partial p is uh, 10 to the fifth pascals uh, divided by the depth, which is 10 to the fourth meters. And so that will scale as 10. Gravity, of course, scales as 10. And fu, uh, similar up here, scales as 10 to the minus third. So in the vertical equation of motion, if you want to have a balance, the two dominant terms are the vertical pressure gradient force and gravity. And they're both uh, basically 10 meters per second squared on this scale. <clears throat> if you, that's a first order approximation. The first order approximation, we have a name for that one, and that is the hydrostatic balance. You might notice that if you eliminate everything else except for the pressure gradient force and gravity, you'll end up with the hydrostatic equation. Uh, dp, by dz, dp by dz is equal to minus rho g. Um, you've seen that before earlier on in the class, and that's where it comes from. It's a first order approximation to the vertical uh, equation of motion. But let's go to a second order ap uh, approximation for the equation. So we would go from 10 to 1. Nothing is on that order. So a third order approximation would be uh, 10 to the 0. So, or excuse me, uh, that's 10 to the 1, that would be 10 to the 0. So that would be 10 to the minus 1. There's nothing there and so forth and so forth. And you'll notice that you have four orders of magnitude difference between the strength of the gravity and the vertical pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force, which is 10 to the minus third. So four orders of magnitude difference. So this hydrostatic equation, does it have time in it? No, it doesn't. So is it diagnostic or prognostic? If it doesn't have time, it's a diagnostic equation describing how the atmosphere is in its current state, but can't tell you anything about the uh, evolution of the vertical equation of motion. So 
if you want to throw in time for somewhere in this equation, you have to go all the way down here to this term right here, which is going to be 10 to the minus 7, which is 8 orders of magnitude uh, different than the uh, pressure gradient and the uh, force of gravity. So calculating the uh, vertical velocity changes numerically is extremely challenging for most models uh, because of the disparity in the size of the accelerations associated with the various components of the uh, vertical equation of motion. And this type of scale analysis would be different if we change the scale to the scale of a hurricane or we change the scale to that of a tornado or that of a supercell thunderstorm. And, and this technique of scale analysis is very useful in dynamics uh, because we'll be looking at a lot of different types of equations and we want to try and distill it down to which are the most important equations which can describe the bulk of the motion of the atmosphere uh, without having to get buried into the uh, details that we would have to solve numerically anyway.